It says holding on is believing that there's only a past. You know what I mean? Holding on is only, I mean, it's believing that there's only a past. Letting go is knowing that there's a future. Now tell me how beautiful that is. Holding on is believing that there's only a past. And letting go is knowing that there's a future. Now, when we understand this, this rings very deep. This rings very truth, um, truthful. This makes a lot of sense. And this right here, as soon as I read it, I fell in love with it because many of us, we don't, we just, we only understand that there's a past, but we can't see tomorrow. Our eyes are completely covered. So, then, so let me read it again. Holding on is believing that there's only a past. Letting go is knowing that there's a future. You know, when you can't see the future, man, you are so stuck in what you think that you know. You know what I mean? Hey, Usuray, how are you? You, you know, when, when, when we don't know there's a future, we hold on to what we think we know. We hold on to a past where we experience certain things. You know, some of us can't move on um, simply because that people been putting you through things and you think that you both been going things together. You know, like I've seen people say, uh, we've been through so much. And in all reality, they have just put you through so much. Oh, hey, Ray, how are you? What's going on? You changed your name. Um, in, and in all reality, you haven't been through much, not together. They have put you through much. I mean, so through so much. And that's sad because when people are putting you through so much, you feel like is you are going through this. But if they didn't put you through it, you only have going through it. And, and a lot of times, they ain't going through it. It's just you. You're the one suffering. You're the one who's struggling. You're the one who hate um, life. You're the one who is mad and depressed. They're just putting you through the thing because you think that you are right or die. So um, you have, we have to understand, man. People, sometimes we have to let go of garbage because a lot of times people are going to fool you thinking that sometimes you are so fooled in your mind that you think that what you're holding on to is something. Hey, Tropical Sunshine, how are we doing? You know, sometimes you are so tricked. They're tricking you so much to for you to think that you are holding on to something until you really open your hands and realize that, that there's nothing there. Seriously, sometimes you open your... You had this grip for so long that you've been thinking that for the longest while that you've been holding on to something. And then finally, when you take the courage, because you have to be brave to look at what you really have. You know, you know how much courage it takes for you to actually look at what you really have. And when you see that you ain't got much, it hurts. So you rather not know and keep your hands closed. So then you hold on to, to distract yourself. And that's something that we, you know, we have to experience. Holding on is, is rough. Um, the root of suffering is attachment. That's something that I live by. The root of attachment, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, the root of suffering is attachment. We, we, all we do is attach to everything that we touch, everybody that comes to our lives, every relationship, everything that we bought, we attach to it. And as we attach to these things, we learn to suffer even more. So you have to understand that you, the, the reason why we are suffering, to, yeah, to a false hope, facts, the reason why we are suffering is because you are attaching yourself to things that you don't need in your life. Especially when something is expired and you try to hold on to it, boy, you suffer. What's going on, deeper consciousness? Do you think that's a person that lacks confidence or they um, that we really are trying to find the good? Sometimes people are trying to find the good. I mean, I mean, sometimes, hey, Miss Um, do you think that it is a person that lacks confidence or that sometimes it's both? Sometimes some people lack confidence because some, you know, sometimes they don't believe that they can actually experience a better experience or experience something else or just stop comparing and stop comparing experiences and just live each experience i think we try to compare too much this one is better than the next you know my probably my next one won't be as good when you learn to compare situations then you're going to always be stuck because there's no comparison you cannot compare two different moments that's the problem. Since we are so lacking of happiness and joy, naturally, we lack happiness, we lack joy, we lack love, we lack just being. So therefore, we want to compare each situation so that those, how we compare them, make us feel a certain way. If you learn to live in a place where you are not comparing each moment to the next one, everything is fine. Moving on is perfectly fine. But since all you can do is compare the last one to the next one, the last one to now, the future one to now, then you're going to always find struggle. You're going to always find it hard to move on, especially when you think the next one might not be as good. 
But I promise you, the moment is perfect. The moment will be, be as good. The mo each moment is each moment. And each moment is perfect and beautiful in its own way. You have to just realize that sometimes you like someone more than they like you. That is facts. That is facts. Yeah, living in the present has helped stay. Yeah, that's that's the only way to stay focused is, is living in the present. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, um, you're this Zellem. I don't know if I said it right. But yeah, but um, sometimes people like lack confidence. And sometimes um, some people try to find the good in people. But sometimes you got to stop trying to find the good and find the reality. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you got to stop looking for the good. Sometimes you got to stop looking for the good in people and see them for what they really are. And when you see what they really are, you get disappointed because you tricked your mind in seeing the good. So you got to just understand. Rest, pick me. How are you doing? You have to understand, hey, this is what, just what it is. Listen, letting go does not mean you stop caring. It means you stop trying to force people. That's what letting go means. It means you don't stop caring because you never stop, especially when you love somebody. You never stop caring. Like you, I didn't leave her because I stopped caring for her. I leave her because I start caring for me. You know what I mean? And, and that's a way to look at it. You don't leave people because you stop caring for them. You leave people because you begin to care for your well-being, for your um, happiness, for your, you have to care for you. You have to care for you, your well, especially your well-being. Because if you care too much about other people, then you begin to suffer, especially when they're doing things. So sometimes you, you know, you let go because not because you stop loving them and it's not because you stop caring, but it's because you start to care about you. And this has to be um, something that we have to actually experience. So now I'm going to talk about some things that you have to accept before you move on. And um, I think this is a very powerful thing. Um, some of us can't accept the, I mean, some of us won't be able to move on until we accept these, these um, five things. And it's very powerful five things and some things that we don't think about sometimes. Um, oh, we're seeing the good in people. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with seeing the good in people. But when you understand that they are bringing something out of you that you don't like, you can still see the good, but you have to learn and teach yourself how to disconnect. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to learn how to separate yourself because even though you see the good in people and that means that you have to be, I mean, you know, like you, like you know, like you, you know within your heart even though you look for the good, there are still things that is not well with your mind. It's not well with your spirit. And you have to separate yourself based on that. So yes, you still look for the good in people because you are a good human. Or as we call it, a good human. You still look for the good. However, you must know. And you know, subconsciously, you know this. People find excuses to not let go too. Yeah, 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 definitely. And, it's, and, like, uh, and that's because like what Romy Rome said, they're not really ready to let go. I mean, letting go is something that you have to get ready for. Like, you have to be ready to let go. Because when you let go, your identity changes. You know? When, you, you know, when you've been in a relationship for many years, and you, your identification becomes tied up and intermingled in somebody else's identity. So now, when you let go, it's for you to actually not recognize who you are anymore. So now, to let go is like, it's hard. Because now, I used to be this. I used to be married. I used to be his woman or his, her or man or whatever else. And now, who am I? My identity is tied up. You know, because when I was married, my identity was tied into my ex-wife. So now, how do I let go? So now, when I let go, now I'm being in an unknown place. I don't know what's going to happen. Um... I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know how I'm going to feel. I don't know what I'm going to attract. I don't know who's coming next. And it becomes chaos. You know what I mean? Take this. That's like when people introduce themselves. They say, I'm so... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm such and such wife. You know, like even in the Bible. Like, look at the Bible. Even in the Bible, in the first chapter, usually... This is the son of some, or this is the wife of something, or husband of something, or this is the son of Isaac and Jacob, and the son of, and all they, they they continue with all that stuff, and that's a lot of times. That's just it, because the identity is so strong, you know what I mean. So we are identified into all these things. So I want to tell you all, man. Uh, I want to tell you all. Part of letting go is to change your identity. Um, so. And that's the hard part, is changing your identity. So before we let go, some things that we have to understand is right. Number one, before letting go, when you're attached, facts. 
Uh, let them go is growing. Facts. Before You cannot move on until you accept these things. You will not receive closure in every situation. You will not receive closure in every situation. You will not receive closure. You know, sometimes we can't move on because we haven't found closure. Hey, Miss uh, Marie, how are we doing? New York in the house. We cannot... Sometimes we waiting for, sometimes we've been broke. Listen, we've been broken up for months. It's been a year. And you can't move on until you, you're still waiting for the person to explain to you why he or she left. You're still waiting for them to explain why they, why they wanted a divorce. And you are suffering, struggling, and waiting for an explanation. You're waiting for an apology. You're waiting for words from a person just to make you actually move on. Hey, Beatrice, how are we doing? So now, you cannot move on until you accept that you will not receive closure in every situation. You got to create your own closure. See, when, before you move on, you must sometimes create your own closure. Because even if people give you a, 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 a reason or an excuse or a certain te you know, telling you certain things, it's still not going to be enough. If a person leaves, if a person leaves sometimes, even if you're waiting for a reason why, their reason is not going to be enough because you still want them. You still love them. You still hope. You still have this all this hope and you still have all this stuff. So no matter what reason they give you, it will never be enough. Yes? No, mama. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's still, that's my daughter, by the way. It still won't be enough. So the, one, of, one of the things is that when people walk out of your life, the best thing to do is create your own closure. Thank you, uh, Miss Mari. Thank you. You just have to accept. Yeah, you have, you have to accept it. That's, some people can't do it. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why. But you can't wait around for people to explain to you why. You can't wait. To, because you know why? Everybody don't care to explain. Eh, no, listen. Everybody don't. Listen, when, when people leave you, they ain't worried about you no more. They ain't worried about you. They ain't worried about what you feel. Or, as a matter of fact, they don't even know what you're waiting on. They don't even know what you're doing. So here you go, waiting for a, 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 an apology. Sometimes you have to, you know, one of the hardest things to do is to give somebody a, an apology or to, um, to, to forgive somebody without, um, to, is, is to forgive somebody without an apology. That's one of the hardest things to do, is to be able to forgive somebody without an apology. You have to do that. This is something that you have to learn. How to forgive somebody without an apology. Because if you wait for an apology, you're waiting for closure. You are waiting for closure the longer you wait for an apology. So sometimes you have to stop waiting for the damn apology. Because it has not. some people do not apologize. Some don't. You know, the, the other day, I apologized to someone. And this, this person, uh, me being a little transparent. You know, the other day, I apologized to someone. And the apology... I said exactly what I wanted to say. I said exactly how I was feeling. And my apology, I, I thought, was, very, you know, I was very apologetic. And sometimes you don't apologize because you think that you did something wrong. Sometimes you apologize because it's the right thing to do. You know what I mean? Like, like sometimes people are so convinced in their own mind, in their own way that you did them wrong. Sometimes you apologize just because you believe it's wrong. I mean, it's the right thing to do. So sometimes you got to kill that pride and, and just apologize. But my apology was perfectly fine. But when you apologize, people think that that means sometimes that you want to continue. That you want to pick up where you left off. Think, I, w I was waiting for your call yesterday. You ain't call me Monday. Miss, I was supposed to call you on Monday to talk. You ain't call me Monday, think. But yeah. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hey, what's up, right? Good morning, everyone. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Hey, Tony Divine. I know I could. I, I know I could miss you. How you doing? But I apologize, and when I apologize, that sparked up so many conversations. I don't know. Listen, I didn't want to go back into all these details. I didn't want to talk about all these things. I just wanted to apologize and be done. That's it. Is it that you accept the apology or not? But I'm already forgive. Listen, I'm already. I'm already moved on. But I just felt in my spirit to 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 apologize. I didn't want to start over. I didn't want another chance. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Not another chance or anything. But, you know, I didn't want to be friends again. I didn't want to be, do nothing again. I just wanted to apologize because I know, I have a feeling that, that you, you know, it was the right thing to do. Listen, sometimes you have to forgive people before the apology is given. Some people will not apologize. Some people will never apologize. Some people don't want to apologize. Some folks don't know 
how to apologize. So the best thing for you is that to uh, to forgive people. As and you know sometimes when when people do you harm, when people do you wrong, naturally you go through your emotions. You go through your anger. You know you you know sometimes you go through guilt. Sometimes you go through certain feelings and certain thoughts and something. You know what I'm saying? And you go through the process, and it's okay. But after a while, we have to come back to ourselves and realize what I'm going through is not benefiting me. It's not making me happy. It's not making me free. Me being angry at you doesn't mean nothing to you. It means forever to me. Me being hateful or me being sad or me being depressed, it does nothing to you. It only defeats me. So let me come back to myself and realize that the best thing to do is to forgive you even if you don't even think that you did me wrong. Even if. You, know, you haven't asked for a forgiveness. Even though you haven't said, Kirk, I'm sorry, I still forgive you. And you know what? I'm not going to hold a grudge against you. Sometimes holding a grudge is like holding fire in your hand for somebody else. You know what I mean? Like if you hold fire in your hand, what's up, Dulce? How are you doing? If you hold fire in your hand for somebody else thinking that, you know, like you want to burn them, it's only burning you. How do you not bring up hurt or past issue while still in a relationship marriage? You know why? Because let, because let me tell you, Miss um, Otter, let me tell you. The reason a lot of us forgive, the reason why a lot of us forgive in, in marriage and in relationship is not that we forgive. It's that we swept it under the rug just so that we can move on and say, hey, hey, boo. Hey, sissy, how are you doing? That's my sister, y'all. Um, we sweep it. So we don't really forgive. What we do we sweep it under the rug so that we can actually think past it. And that's why in a lot of relationship, that's why in a, in a lot of relationship, after that person have done so many things, at the end when they leave, what happens is that, here you go, I'm hurt, I need healing. But if you keep doing the work and forgiving at each time that person messes up, at the end of the relationship, ain't that much hurt? Ain't that much healing needed because everything has been swept away. It's like when the Bible speaks about, um, you know, when you repent, your sins are swept away. It's like this right here. When you forgive, it's gone. When you forgive, it's gone. And each time you should forgive. Don't wait for the end. Hey, Crown, how are we doing? Don't wait for the end results when somebody, you know, walk away after they, after they did A, B, C, D, and E. Finally, you say, I, you know, you know, I, I mean, oh my God, I'm the healing. No. The reason why we... Um, how do you forgive when it hurts so much? You forgive. So let me tell you. Well, first you have to ask, why does it hurt so much? You, you have to ask, why does it hurt so much? What am I believing that make this hurt so much? Because a lot of times what hurts so much is the picture that we paint in our mind. Is the image that we attach to that person. Is our own identity and the roles that we attach to this person. So now we have, since we have created a person in our mind. Listen, you know me from my live videos. You know me from TikTok. But you have a version of me in your mind that you think I am. You have created me an identity. So you think I'm this, this. And let me tell you, everybody who's looking at me right now is going to see a different identity. And which one, which one am I? I am neither of them. I am none of them. I ain't none of those. I ain't none of those that you think I am. I can't be. You are only basing who I am based on your own concept of who you think I am. So now, when you're in a relationship, people hurt you so much because how do you view these people? What are you thinking in your head? What do you expect? Expectations of them people. What images do you put in your head? Sometimes you have to release those expectations from people. I don't care if your husband, wife, mother, father, siblings, cousins. You must release those expectations because your perception is what's killing you. So how do you forgive when it hurts so much? Understand, if you don't forgive, it hurts even more. If you hold something in your hand, the first couple of minutes is light. It's light. But if you try to hold your arm out for 15 minutes, this light feather ruler becomes to be 100 pounds. It begins to wear your muscles out. It begins to tear your shoulders apart. It begins to make you make faces because now you're holding on. It begins to create numbness, tingling. It begins to affect your entire mood. 
it begins to affect your entire presence. It begins to affect your, your, your attitude. It begins to affect your temperance. It begins to affect your personality. Listen, how do you forgive when you are hurt? You have to understand that forgiveness is past being hurt. Forgiveness is about understanding that the more you hold on to it is the more it's effing with you. It's the more it's going to hurt you long run. Baby, do you need something? What do you want? I just asked you if you were hungry. What do you want to eat? You, you want to give me a second, okay? I'm sorry. What do you want to eat? I just asked you if you wanted a hot dog. You said no. You want a hot dog? You want a hot dog? Lord, have mercy. <laughs> my bad, people. My bad. I'm talking to my daughter. I just asked. I have these vegans. Hot, I have these vegan hot dogs that they eat, and I asked her if she wanted one. My son just ate two. She said no. No, she wanted a hot dog when I went live. My bad. Um, jeez. <laughs> Where was I? I forget what I was saying. Man. What was I saying, people? You want to give me a second, all right? Let me make a hot dog tomorrow. And you know, black people don't, black folks don't boil hot dogs. We, um, we fry hot dogs. In Estonia, we have these vegan hot dogs. They are so, um, Nice and tasty. <laughs> Island people, we don't boil them, we fry them. <laughs> Talking about how to forgive. So yeah, so listen, so it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt what the person did, but you have to understand. You have to understand um, how, what do you expect of these people? What are, what are your expectations of these people? How do you view these people? Because a lot of times what hurts us, you know, what, what hurts us is not our heart that's broken because the heart is ready to move on. It's your mind that you got to convince because the mind is where you create your picture in your mind, in your head. In your mind is where you create that damn picture. You know what I mean? So you create this picture in your mind of what this person is, how life is, what you are, how your identity have come together. And now your heart, ain't nothing wrong with your heart. Now you have to re, um, rethink and you have to re reprogram your own mind about how you see that person. Because for the whole time, your mind, you are experiencing a spiritual awakening. It's an awakening that your mind is experiencing now. So the hurt is coming from an, an awakening. It's not from a heartbreak. It's from an awakening. So we have to understand this. The awakening is whooping your butt. Because you have to now change your mindset about how you see this thing. So understand this. The picture that you create in your mind about this person is what's going to hurt you. You have to understand that if you don't forgive this person, it's going to hurt you. So even though you're hurt right now, I understand this. What's hurting you sometimes, what's hurting you is your expectation. You thought this person would never cheat. You thought that they would never leave you. You thought that they would never lie. You thought that, that they would never tell people about you. You thought that they would never do you wrong. You thought that, oh, you assumed that they would never say a bad word against you. You thought that they wasn't telling your parents anything. You thought that they wasn't going to um, get, you know, get you pregnant. Leah, you thought that they wasn't get you pregnant and leave and walk away. And now, all, all in this thing that you created in your mind of them, you're like, oh, shoot. They really did it. I never knew that they would do it. They really did it. So now your mind is like, oh, how do I view them differently and stay with them? How do I stay with them? How do I stay with them? Because in our reality, you want to stay. But how do I see them differently and stay? That's the part that gets you upset. It's because you want to stay and you want to see them the same way, but you can't do both. Does that make sense? You cannot do both. You can't do both. You have to see reality. This is when your reality must shift. You have to shift your reality. You got to see them for what they are and accept them for what they are or move on. You got to see them for what they are. And if you can't take it, move on. If you can, stay. But if you take them for what they are, forgive the person all the way. Because if you don't forgive them all the way, you're going to wait at the end 
until the relationship is broken. You're going to wait until the end part. And then you're going to say, oh my God, I'm so hurt. I need healing. I don't trust nobody. Because you know why? You didn't forgive each time. You just, because to be honest, to love is forgive. To love is to forgive. Without, without love, there's no forgiveness. And a lot of times, what you don't love is yourself. Because if you love yourself, you forgive. And you don't forgive them. I mean, you don't forgive them for them. You forgive them for you. Because you are the one carrying the pain. See, the loved one don't carry burdens. When you are loved, and when you have love, you don't want to carry that burden. Hey, Roman Rome, thank you for the gifts, man. And listen, thank you for the gifts. Those gifts, um, those gifts are going to be used to give to people for their children going back to school, to buy school supplies. So every gift that you donate... Or every gift that you give me is going to children um, for school, especially in this month, because right now the, it, the economy is pretty rough right now. All right, so whatever gift that you send, going to um, parents who need help uh, with multiple kids or something else. All right, um, so yes, did I answer your question? The person who asked about what if it hurt? To love is to forgive, yeah, and sometimes you have to forgive yourself. You know, sometimes the hardest one to forgive is yourself. You're going to send it to Kasha. Oh, really? TikToks take some gifts too? Oh, if you can't, if you don't send gifts on here, send it to Cash App, all right? My Cash App is in my um, bio. Um, I hope I answered that, that, that person's question. You did? Okay, good, 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 good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it. All right, so the next thing that you have to uh, accept before you move on is this right here. Most of what people do is about them, not about you. Okay? Most of what people do is about them, not about you. Check this out. One of the reasons why we can't move on is because we hold grudges against people. We hold so strong, we hold so strongly grudges for what somebody else did. We hate them for this. We hate what they did. We hate how we feel that they did. We hate that they did the same thing, especially when we told them. We can't change exactly. You know, especially have you ever um have you ever opened to somebody and tell them what hurt you the last time and they end up they end up doing the same thing to you? That even hurts even more. Listen, what people do is not about you. Just like what you do is not about them, it's about you. It's about how you love. It's about how you are angry. It's about how you are emotional. It's not about you sometimes. Sometimes, it, actually, most of the time, the things that you do is because it's, it's your personality. It's what you know what to do. It's, it's, it's how you see life. So you have to give people the same grace. Because a lot of times, what they do ain't about you. If somebody want to cheat on you, uh, they ain't cheating on you. But if somebody want to cheat, it's not because you ain't good enough, you ain't right, you ain't the best woman or the best man, you ain't strong, you ain't beautiful, or you ain't handsome. Sometimes, it's nothing to do about you. Hey, Dara, who are you doing? Actually, not sometimes. 99% of the time, people have their own internal struggles. It doesn't matter whether they are with you or not. It doesn't matter if they like you or love you, people still have struggles. People deal with struggles. People deal with drugs. Okay, just because somebody does drugs and you don't like it, is it about you or is it about them? If it's about them, they understand. Some people cheat, some people lie, some people do all these things because it's not about you. It's, it's, it's what they know. It's all they know sometimes. Sometimes it ain't about you, it ain't nothing about what you want, what you say, what you, uh, if you love me, you will do this. Sometimes people have weaknesses. That's why people go on drugs. That's why alcohol is a big thing. That's why, you know, marijuana, cigarettes, and all these pills, that's why they are so out there. People are looking for something to ease the pain. Some people are so hurt, healing ain't happened yet. They're still looking for peace. They're still looking for the joy. They're still looking for the thing to make them feel good. So I'm saying, sometimes you can't hold on to them a grudge it's too much because they're already suffering. And you, you know, you holding on to a grudge is because you want to make them suffer. But understand, when a person does that bad to you, it's because they're already suffering. Because in all reality, nobody who likes you and being around you want to hurt you. Nobody want to hurt you that much. Nobody ain't hurting you on purpose. There's nobody in your life. Now, some people who are very just ridiculous, but the majority of people ain't going to want to hurt you for no reason. 
But you know what we do instead? We hold on to that pain because you feel disappointed. You feel betrayed. You feel mad. You think it's personal. You think they hate you. You think that it's you. It's about you. Most of the times you are holding on for no damn reason because it was never about you. Do you understand that? You actually hold... You actually hold, um, hurting yourself. Because I'm telling you, holding a grudge is like holding some fire in your hand. The hurt is indirect. You know, you know, sometimes the hurt, this is called collateral damage. When somebody is at war with themselves, there will be collateral damage. In every war, there's collateral damage. In every, you know, just like, for instance, when Russia is invading, um, when Russia is invading um, Ukraine, there's going to be innocent civilians. There's going to be innocent people that's getting hurt, blown up, getting killed. And it's not there. It's not, it's not even their fight. But anytime you are with somebody who is self-destructive, anytime you are with somebody who is self-destructive, anytime you are with somebody who hates themselves, anytime you are with somebody who keep, who don't have the strength within themselves, you're going to always be collateral damage. So you got, that's why you have to know who you're with. You have to know the, the amount of destruction people are doing to themselves. Does that make sense to you all? It's not about you. Don't take things personal. It's really not about you, for real. Give me one second, all right? Let me just do this last hot dog thingy, and then I can go back to my room and keep talking. Just, just give me one second. Let me finish making this girl her, her hot dog. And she don't even eat the bread. I don't know why I, don't even know why I give her bread. Because the girl don't eat bread, she don't eat carbs. She's very carb conscious for some reason. I don't know why. Here you go, mama. It's hot, okay? So you gotta blow it, okay? You are, you are, give me a second, all right? Let me finish up giving her her stuff and then I'm back to talking to you guys. And I didn't want to talk long neither. Here you go, mama. Here's the juice. You all know I'm a stay-at-home dad, so I gotta do the stay-at-home dad thing. You all know this, right? <laughs> you all know I'm a stay-at-home daddy. Hey, hey, Afia, how you doing? I think one of the best things I ever did was be a stay-at-home dad, but it's one of the hardest things I ever did, too. I don't think the military was this rough. Lord, it wasn't this rough. Whew. Okay, so we finished with point two, right? Number three. You, you will never move on until you accept this one simple thing. Some things cannot be explained. <laughs> you, see me, you see me on a daddy road, right? <laughs> you are, thank you for the gifts. Thank you all for the gifts so much. Some things can't be explained. What people do, why they did it, why they... You know, sometimes people do things that they, don't, they can't explain why they did it. Like my son. My son is seven. He cannot explain why he do what he do. And sometimes I have to stop looking for an explanation. Some things cannot be explained. So you sometimes have to stop looking for an explanation. Sometimes somebody do something. Number one, it's because of them. And number two, they have no explanation. But you go crazy looking for an explanation. But I, don't, I just want to understand why. You know, understand this one thing. Things happen. Understand sometimes relationship ends. Understand sometimes that everything comes to an end. Understand some things don't last forever. Understand that some things will not go on no matter how much you want it to go on. Understand that there is no explanation because there's things that we just can't see. There's so much in this world that we cannot see. There's more that, that we cannot see. There's forces right now that's around us that we cannot explain. And when things happen, don't fight it. Some of these things are... It's because for your good. You know, sometimes I have to remind myself, this is happening for my good. And I know it don't look good right now. It doesn't feel good. But I have to, I have to believe that I always, it's always a better tomorrow. It's always a better next moment. Some things just ain't going to work out in your way because there's a better way that you don't know of. So that's why you have to release the idea that you are so stuck to this one way of things going, you have to release that thought and actually hold on to an unknown period, an unknown time, an unknown place. You have to hold on to an unknown known. We are never in control. Exactly. We are never in total control. We have to understand that some things can't be explained, man, because we can't see all these things. There's too much going on. 
The four things that you cannot move on until you accept. The four things is right here. And I said this before. And I, so I already said it, so I, I won't keep here. Some people won't apologize because they can't. They don't know how to apologize. Hey, Booker, how are we doing? Some people will not apologize. And I said this already because they can't. They don't know how to. They don't want to. Sometimes they don't think that they did anything wrong. And sometimes, to be honest, they don't do anything wrong. Sometimes they did nothing wrong. And they're not, because in their heart, they're doing it. You know, sometimes when you are doing things for yourself to make you better, to make you powerful, to make you ha things happen in your favor, you're, you're not doing anything wrong. But for somebody else, they are experiencing what you are doing as wrong. We all have done that. All of us have felt like I have no reason to be sorry, but somebody else is waiting for your apology. We all experience this. Each and every one of us have done something to better ourselves while somebody else is waiting for an apology from us for doing what we, you know, like especially sometimes when you, sometimes when it's time to, <laughs> sometimes when it's time to elevate, well, you gotta, you, you gotta apologize to being busy. Sometimes you have to apologize for separating yourself. Sometimes you are, sometimes you have to apologize for wanting your space. I mean, you ain't got to, but some people are going to be offended. Sometimes you have to apologize for all these damn things that you have no reason to apologize, but just to make the air clear, you apologize. You see what I'm saying? And it's all true because sometimes even you separate yourself to better yourself, to go back to school, to go to the gym, to keep your time. Sometimes your old friends want to hang out and they want to do all these things. Hey, Precious Charm, how are you doing? Long time to see. Hey, Dr. Free. Um, sometimes your old friends want to do this, they want to do that, they want to hang out, and you're like, ah, I can't do it. So here you go. I'm so, I'm so sorry because they really wanted to see you. But sometimes people do things and they don't want to apologize. Understand that even if they can't apologize, sometimes you got to just say, hey, okay, I get it. You don't have to apologize. I have to release this burden. It's not, you know what? Sometimes we have to take the burden from ourselves because we expect people to see what we are feeling to see, you know, we, we expect them to see how we are feeling, know how we're feeling. What's going on, Thunder? How are you doing? You know, know how we are feeling, you know, this and all this. But they don't know how we're feeling. They don't know. We don't know how they're feeling. So sometimes we have to release the burden and say, listen, I don't know if you're going to apologize or not. I don't know if you feel bad or not. I don't know if you feel like you did me wrong. But let me say, let me, let me release this burden. Good, good morning, um, crowned um, girl boss. You have to release this burden. It's your burden. Don't put it on them. It's your burden. You see what I'm saying? And the last thing, you cannot move on until you understand that, as uh, my, my brother said, you cannot change people. You cannot change people. You know what, um, Kim Blackula? I personally don't take things personal. I don't take things personal either. I have learned, um, especially when you read that book, the five levels of attachment. I mean, no, no I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, the four, uh, Lord, what's that book? Um, Cron, what's the book? The four agreements. You, 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 know, you realize that you can't take things personal because, number one, it's not about you. People do things because they want to do things. People do things because what they are going through. People do things because that's their choices. Sometimes people only realize that they have one choice. Yeah, the four agreements. Sometimes people do things because they, you know, they only have one choice. And they do what they got to do just because that's what they have to do. So we can't just, you know, we can't stop being so offended. You know, our problem is that we are always offended. It's like we want, it's like some of us, we scroll TikTok. Hey, this person going with this Jesus is coming stuff. Let me, let me block you real quick. This block is coming to you. Um, so let me tell you, sometimes, right? Sometimes people just doing things, man. People just doing things. People just doing things. People just doing things. And we wait for them to change. And the more we wait for them to change, the, the more we, we see that they're not changing. The more we see them not changing is the more angry we become. Is the more upset we become. And then we begin to be resentful. You know what's one of the worst things to be is resentful? But you know, in about 75% of relationship, there is resentment in there entangled in there and you know once there's resentment there's separation because once you resent somebody once you resent your partner the separation is strong once you resent somebody the separation is so it is resentment is so loud <clears throat> 
So I'm saying, the more you wait for somebody to change is the more you're going to suffer. You're the one suffering. They're not. Hey, Tanya. You're the one suffering. They ain't. They ain't living free. Thank you um, for, for showing love Tuesday. Thank you. But we got resentful because some behaviors are just not. So listen, if it's not acceptable, then we shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't be there. But sometimes we have to see who we are with. This is why we have to see who we are with. We have to wake up from a reality that we think they are this, this, and this, and this. But in our reality, they are really a common person. You know, if you think your man was a king, not in the king sense that we use now, and then you realize that he was just a jester, a court jester, and you still don't want to believe it because, well, I think he's a king anyways. Well, he's not a king. He's a court jester. Which one are you going to take? Because if you think that he's a king, you, you, you are going to suffer because of your expectation. But if you recognize that he's a court jester, you might accept him for who he really is. The problem is we don't want to accept people for who they really are. So we hope they change, hoping that they will meet our expectations. But they're not. Because if you expect this one thing, they could never meet that expectation when there's something else. Stop trying to change people. You, you have to learn how to accept people and who they are. This is the biggest thing that we struggle with. You have to learn how to accept people in their fullness. That's what love really is. That is actually unconditional love. Is to be able to accept somebody. They come with garbage. They come with baggage. They come with different beliefs from you. They come from different mindsets. They come from a different culture. They come from a different place. Accept it. Why do you want somebody just like you? That's boring. I don't want somebody like me. I don't want somebody. I don't want a woman like me. I think that's very boring. I don't want that. I think that's not a, that's going to be like, ah, I'm good. I want somebody who can teach me how to love. Meaning somebody who I could challenge my, see, I don't want somebody to challenge me. I want to challenge myself to say, can I love this person? Because it's the, I mean, in all reality, there's nothing wrong with you. But it's just my concept of you should change. That's what we do. My concept of you, of who you should be, of how you should walk, of how you should dress, of how you should speak, of how you should act, should change. This is exactly what it is. Listen, I'm not saying to accept anything. I'm saying if you can't accept this stuff, move on. If you cannot accept and work through certain things, you, yes, don't be there because resentment is going to build. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying me personally, my challenge comes from can I accept Somebody for who they really are instead of painting some stupid picture. You see what I'm saying? Instead of painting some picture, instead of painting some idea or ideology around who a person is. So I'm saying, sometimes you have to release what you think they are and hold on to what the reality is. And when you see the reality of them, either leave them or keep them. But if you're going to keep them, don't complain. Don't try to change them. Don't try to be angry. Don't resent. Just if you cannot take it, you got to walk away. This is our biggest thing. We refuse to walk away, but we argue. We are miserable. We are unhappy. And we are complaining. If you're going to do that, then walk away. Walk away is much easier. It's much easier. So, that's five things that you have to accept. Again, first one is you will not receive closure in every situation. Number two, most of what people do is based on them. Number three... Some things cannot be explained. Number four, some people won't apologize even if they, I mean, even if, because they can't. And number five, you cannot change people no matter how much you think they need to change. People change themselves and when they are ready. No matter how much love you give people, your love don't change them. Their love does. No, you can't love somebody into changing them. Many of us, we try to love somebody so much that we want them to change. And the more we think that we love them, is the more they're going to change. But that's not how it happens. Sometimes that person has to recognize that they must love themselves for them to change. So I'm saying, you have to learn how to uh, let people love themselves. Because if they don't love themselves, they won't change. All right? Now, we're going to talk about something simple. We're gonna talk about something simple. Very, very, man, did I did I not make this? Oh man. How to walk away from someone? How to walk away from someone? Now I had this in my notes, and for some reason, let me see if I copied it. 
Oh, nope, I didn't. TikTok, um, celeb, listen, is that all you bring in is cheating and lying and stuff? I mean, okay, we know, okay, okay, don't accept cheating. I, we, we know these things. I'm talking, listen, oh Lord, check this out, right? Some people are hurt. Some people are hurt. Some people are very hurt. And they, they're going to carry their hurt all everywhere they go. They're going to express, you know, you, know you, you can tell. You can tell somebody is hurt by the conversations that they are having, what they are stuck in, the language that they speak. Some people are just hurt, so everywhere they go, they're going to talk about their past. Cheating, lying, cheating, lying, cheating, cheating. Okay, you know there is more to relationship. You know there is more. Listen, I would rather my wife cheat on me than take all my money and leave me. I would rather her cheat on me. I mean, I'm serious. I would prefer my wife, my girlfriend, cheat than take all my money, all of our money, and go in. I would rather the cheating. I would rather her cheat on me. Listen, cheating is not the worst thing. It's not the worst thing. We got to cut that stuff out. It's not the only thing that happens. But if the, the, the thing is, some of us only are able to connect with those who cheat. Those who lie. So that's all we can speak of. But if you know how to connect with people with a higher frequency, people with a higher mindset, that's not that's gonna be that's not gonna be your only conversation. That's not gonna be your only conversation. That you're gonna talk about more. But if all you can talk about is cheating and lying, is that all you is that all your intellect is? Let's talk about something deeper. How how do we um how do we how do we maintain a positive mindset? How do we stop the mind going to the bad. You know what though, to be honest, um, how do you stop that? It has to be a choice. You have to, you have to decide. That has to be a decision that you have to make. And then when your mind is going places, you bring it back. When, because your mind travels, right? Your mind will travel when you are unconscious. The more that you are not present is when your mind will travel to those places where you don't like being. And when you travel to those places, you start feeling angry, you st because every time your mind goes on a, on a time where you were hurt, where you were cheated on, where you were depressed, where you were angry, where somebody did you wrong, where somebody lied or cheated on you or do something, then you your body starts to create those same chemicals that it once did. So now you begin to feel the same feeling again. So when your mind goes to these places, you have to become awakened. Acknowledge that your mind is traveling. So now you have to become conscious. When you become aware of your mind, it stops moving. It comes back to now. It comes back to a place. So now it, it has to be a constant conversation. It has to be a constant awareness. So that's how you stop your mind from creating all this damn drama. Because it's your mind that creates the drama. It's not people. It's not things. It's how you perceive everything else. Because once you hurt, you start to perceive everything as a threat. If you are being hurt, you you begin to see things, everything in your life, everything in your in your path, everything that you do, everything that you, everybody in your life becomes a threat. So you have to understand when you see things becomes a threat and you can't see peace, you have to re tell yourself, okay, I'm believing a lie. When you can't see love, when you can't trust, when you can't be humble, when you can't be free of anxiety, when you can't be free of all them drama, when you actually, you know, when you are bothered and worrisome, that means you are believing a lie. And when you are believing a lie, you, you're going to be troubled. But, so now you have to come back to the truth. What is the truth? The truth is, I am the truth. The truth is, I am able to trust my intuition. The truth is, I am love. The truth is, I have my own peace. The truth is, nobody is entitled to any parts of me that I don't want to give. The truth is, nobody has power over me to bring out those evil thoughts and these evil mindsets and this attitude. Nobody has, that's the truth. If you believe in the truth, happiness, joy, love, trust, and all them things are going to always be there. When you believe in a lie because one person did it, two people did it, three person do something else, your perception is going to be messed up anyways. Yeah. So, I mean, so I'm saying sometimes you have to, I mean, understand. Now, I had, I had, I had made some notes about um, the 10 things that you do to move on from a relationship. And it was so deep in my um, thingy. I thought I had copy and pasted again to the top of my list. 
Just give me one second, okay? Because I want to talk about these 10 things that we do to move on from these relationships that we don't do. Just give me one, just give me one second. Lord. And I can't even, see, look, I have a lot of notes. It's a whole bunch of notes I have. I have, I just take notes on my phone all the time because I make videos. So my, so my videos come from my notes. Oh, nope. Yes. Here we go. 10 things to do if you want to let somebody go after a breakup. You are all ready for these 10 things? You want to you get your pen? 10 things that you do when you want to let somebody go after a breakup. This is the, one of the hardest things to do. So if you are, <laughs> you have the soda is ready. <laughs> it makes, just makes you go crazy. Facts, exactly. I appreciate you, brother. Gotta, hey, you too, um, Thunder. You take it easy. You have a beautiful day. Thank you so much. So 10 things that you got to do. Cassandra is all ears. Self-care. Facts. 10 things that you got to do if you want to let somebody go after a breakup. Number one, you can't find your little book, um, Russ Pickney. Shame, 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 shame. Number one, the first thing that you got to do is this right here. How many of us still got pictures in their phones? Still got pictures in their houses? Pictures in your phone? Pictures in old photos? of your ex-boyfriend or old girlfriend. How many of us have those pictures? How many of us have those pictures? Be honest. How many of us are holding on to pictures just because we're not ready to release them yet? Just because we think that, oh man, if your last four exes, Lord, have mercy. Jeez. <laughs> Listen, if you haven't gotten over somebody, especially when it's fresh, now, Yes, you don't want to lose memories, but to be honest, memories can't be lost. You have to be able and be brave enough to let go of those pictures. Listen, a picture, what they say about a picture? What they say about a picture? A picture speaks a thousand words. And sometimes, sometimes when you open up your phone, when you see them pictures, the energy comes back. The, the memory comes back. Remember, your soul ain't closed, your spirit ain't closed off yet. Your spirit ain't closed off yet. Sometimes you have to be brave and bold enough to take those pictures and delete those pictures. Or at least put that picture away in some place that when you get to a place where you get over these people, then you can actually look at these pictures again. But for in, the, in the meantime, in the meantime, delete those pictures. Pictures are very strong. Picture, remember, we put pictures in our minds. And it's these pictures that we put in our minds, pictures of happiness, of sadness, of emotional stuff and all this stuff. These pictures that we create is what making us act a certain way, is what making us feel a certain way. So imagine a picture in your phone is gonna bring up emotions and energy within you because this, this picture carries a certain energy. And when you hold on to this picture, you're gonna always be drawn by this damn picture. Delete your pictures or move them somewhere else that you won't have access to them until you get to a place where you don't, um, when you touch the wound and it's not hurting anymore. That means when you can look at them without any feelings. Does that make sense? Don't have any pictures, but the phone number, to them. <laughs> if X still um, has mine, I was like, why do you have my pics? Yeah, I'll delete six years of pictures, let go of the memory. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's done. It's done. Number two, number two, number two, Number two, check this one out. This one, you are gonna hate this one. This one don't make sense to everybody. Check this out. How do we keep pushing mindset when everything goes bad? And nothing goes bad, it's just how you perceive it. Listen, nothing goes bad. If you perceive things bad and, it, and it's pushing you, it's pushing your energy, it's making you sad, it's making you angry, it's making you resentful, it's making you all them stuff. Sometimes it's time to go, I mean, sometimes it's time to move. Sometimes it's time to do so. Sometimes. And you know, when things go bad, it's for you to go. When things go bad, it's time for you to walk away. Sometimes when things go really bad, when you can't get back to yourself, when you can't recognize yourself anymore, when you can't acknowledge yourself, when you don't like yourself, when you don't like what you look like, like what you feel, like what you see, like what you experience, like your perception of life. When your perception of life has become ugly, it's time to walk away. That's the universe telling you, I'm giving you all these things. I'm trying to not give you that. I'm trying to have you not hate yourself. 
I'm trying to have you not despise yourself, not disrespect yourself, not recognize yourself, but I cannot do it because now you need me to go to the extreme. I have to show you everything before you walk away because you don't trust the simplicity that I'm showing you. You don't trust the simple things I'm showing you. You don't trust when I'm telling you look at his phone or look at her phone or look at the, the wall or look at the time or look at this. You, you, you don't trust these things. So now I have to, make, I have to shake you even harder for, so that I can awake you. Sometimes the universe must shake you to awaken you. And when it awakens you, that's when you're like, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. But then when you get it, now you hurt. Now you're taking it personal. Now you mad. Now you resentful. Now you angry. Now you stifling in your own anger. But you should have, some of us just collect red flags. We just collect and put it in our pockets. We, hey, ah, ah, next red flag, ah, shoot, my bra. Thank you all for the gifts so much. Thank you all for the gifts. I appreciate them. You know, we collect red flags. We're just picking them up. You know how you all women be, be putting red flags in your bra? Check this right there. And it's, it's out of the way. And get this. All them red flags that you have, do something with them. You know what I mean? Like, do come to a reality. Make a picture. Build a picture with the red flags. Make the whole wall red with them. So that you can remember, don't do this. Stop. You know what I mean? I'm saying, like, take them red flags. Number two, messages. Delete messages. Some of us hold on to these messages that every time you read them, you think it keeps you away from them because it was such a hurtful message. The message was so hurtful that he or she sent you. So you want to keep it in your phone to remind you, or oh, even some of you all are still married. Hey, Kaboos, how are you doing? <clears throat> some of you all are still in relationship with these people. And I'm married with these people. Boyfriend or girlfriend with these people. But you hold on to those angry messages. That every time you see them, it reminds you, don't trust him. Don't trust her. Get, you know, every time you read it, get mad. Let me tell you something. If I send you a text, can you... Sometimes, can you feel somebody's vibe or energy when they text you? Can you feel somebody's energy when they text you? Tally Cali, what's good? Sometimes you can feel their intentions is to hurt you with them texts. Sometimes those texts is to make you jealous, is to make you angry, is to make you have anxiety. Sometimes a message could give you anxiety. Listen, those messages are sent with the intent of their emotions and their energy to make you feel what they are feeling. Every time you read them, when you send them in your phone, every time you read them, you keep reliving that same energy. You get mad all over again. You get, you, get, you get confused all over again. You you sad all over again. You hurt all over again. Delete those messages. Delete them. Because now they're stored up in your phone. And your phone, your phone is so heavy with bad vibes. Because it's filled up pictures and messages. Delete those things. Yes, sometimes it depends on how you read them also. But sometimes people send messages hurt. You never send somebody a hurtful message on purpose? Like, I can't stand your punk ass. <laughs> you, you're so stupid. You this. You ain't gonna never be nothing. I can't, I can't stand you. You ain't no good. You're gonna never be any good. You garbage. I'm talking about stuff that you know for a fact is meant to be hurtful. Some of us sent some, I used to send some hurtful stuff back in the days. I used to, boy, I used to, I'm a Scorpio. I used to hurt you with my messages. Oh my, I used to hurt your soul. I'm talking about, I used to tell you the worst things without using a curse word. Hurt your soul. I've been told that I have the, I have a gift of gab. Hey, Erica, I have a gift of gab. So I could speak love, but when I'm ready to speak a different way, I can. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, you know, everything cuts two ways. Broke up with my ex cause he was cheating and got mad at me for wanting to relieve him. See what I'm saying? But I'm saying, you have to um, saving, loving those old relationship pictures can be hurtful too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Hey, God, that's how you doing. Yeah, Scorpio, right? <laughs> Scorpios, man. We, listen, Scorpios don't play. Listen, we bad with words, man. We terrible with words. So I'm saying, delete the messages. The next thing, sometimes, man, how to let go. The next thing, especially when, you, when it's brand new, when the breakup is brand new, sometimes, man, you want to text them because, you know, the body remembers. The body remembers every time you used to text them. Every time you spoke to them, the body remembers. The body keeps a score, right? I have a book called The Body Keeps a Score. 
The body remember every time, the times of the day, in the morning, lunchtime, and probably before you go to sleep, it was the time that you talk to them the more. I mean, the, the most. So now, when those times naturally come, when those times naturally come, it's like you want to text them. You want to see how they're doing. And, you know, we can be friends. You know, you, want, you have to talk to them. Listen, I don't care how much you want to talk to them. That's the body lying to you. Exactly, that routine. That's the body lying to you. The body lies to you. No matter how much you want to text them, don't text them. Especially when you know what's right for you. When you know it ain't right. When you know it brings you back in the same cycle crop again. Because sometimes one text can take you back to the same cycle. Next thing you know, you text him or her. They text you back. Tomorrow morning, you, you shame again. They leave in your apartment. You feel terrible. Ah, oh, no. here we go again. You know what I mean? That's from one text. Because people know how to get to you. Listen, everybody that you know, everybody that you with, that you um, broke up with, they learn how to manipulate you. They learn how to say the things that you want to hear to make them get what they want to get. They learn the, some keywords to say to make you back in their in their bed, to make you open your mind. Just you know, like for instance, when me back in the days when I was a um, uh, in my whoring days. Um, you know, back in my whoring days, um, on my, my, my days of whoredom, <laughs> I used to wait a week. I was like, hey, listen, um, check, check this out. Nah, I'm not calling because I want you back. I'm just calling to apologize because I know I did wrong. And I know I was foolish. I was so stupid. I don't know what's wrong with me. But listen, I apologize because I see you hurt and I don't want to hurt you. So I'm sorry, all right? And you don't have to say anything. I could just, um, it's okay. You, you, you sure it's okay? I mean, you're not mad? I mean, I'm mad, but. All right, well, you know, I understand. So what you doing? <coughs> Um, nothing. I really want to talk to you. I really want to talk to you. Like, can I just see you and talk to you for a second? Uh-uh, because if you come over here, just don't touch me, okay? Just don't, you know, just, I know you don't, don't touch me, okay? Okay, dude, I won't touch you. Okay, you come back. Now, when I said that, hey, she, she got off the phone, she's happy. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So I come over, ring her doorbell, knock on the door. Cause you know she's not gonna want to let you in so easy. You gonna knock again? Pop, 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 pop. Yes, I'm coming. You know she, cause she wanna make, you know she wanna make it seem like she's mad. You know she. Like, I already know how she was. You can't lie to me. So I come in and I'm like, listen, can we talk? What you wanna tell me, Kirk? I mean, we do this all the time. What do you wanna tell me this time? Oh no, I just, I just wanna see you. Why you want to see me? Now, you know you want to hear why you want to see me. You know you want to, why you want to see me? Because, you know, you ain't come and see me for the past two months. So, you want to see me now? Because I've missed you so much. You know, I have never realized how much I need you in my life. Because two months have been the hardest part in my life. And, you know, I understand if you don't want to see me anymore. And I really, I really understand because you are so beautiful. You are so amazing. And you don't need me. I know you don't need me. But seeing you just makes my heart just. So back in those days, I couldn't cry. So I had to open my eyes for a long time, right? Because, you know, the more you keep your eyes open, is the more the wind and the wind go in your eye, right? And then your eyes start to get water. So I, I didn't blink. So I'm like, um. After a while, my eyes started to... So I'm like, listen, I just want... <laughs> straight back to my place. Listen, so I just want us to, you know, be good. I just want us to be good. I miss you. I, see, I can't even not blink again because I don't play those games anymore. You know, I can't even... <sighs> then I stop talking. Then when I stop talking, when a woman see a man cry for some reason, when he gets quiet, she gets emotional. Listen I'm, listen, I'm showing you all the game now. I'm showing you all the game. You all listen, don't be triggered. Don't be mad. Don't be angry. But I could see my water in my eyes coming now because I could hardly see the screen. 
When Leah, baby, baby, Leah, can you turn? I can't see the comments no more because my water, my eyes are begin to water. Leah, can you turn it down, please? Damn, I just, I just blink. I you know, I get quiet. When I get quiet, she, she's quiet too. And she knows what's about to happen. And I'm like, oh my god, more breeze, right? M more wind, cause. The wind, it, it, her house is, has no fan, so the the wind, ain't, you know, the fan ain't spinning. So therefore, my eyes taking so long to damn water. I'm like, God dang! So I'm like, listen, I don't, I ain't came here to cry because you just don't want. And she's like, no, say it. It's okay, just say it. I don't know, not, it's not the reason here, and I keep blinking, I can't keep my eyes open for longer. And she's like, no, just say it, just say it, Kirk. just please say it, please. I can't do it. <laughs> Next thing you know, one little drop comes down, and one drop comes down, I squeeze, and then it's that, she's like, oh my God, you really sorry. Listen, cut the nonsense out. Cut the nonsense out, man. I mean, cut the nonsense out. Like, you are going to stop believing this. Non Just because somebody cries doesn't mean that they change. They don't, people cry because they want to cry. People cry because they can. They are able to cry. Listen, man. Stop texting people. Because texting people lead to sex. It leads to hugging people. It needs to stop. It needs to be vulnerable. Just stop. It's games people, like people are playing. When people understand... When people understand that they are hurting you, listen, they leave you alone because sometimes you love somebody so much that when you love them so much, you don't want to hurt them. So then you, you leave them alone. You don't want to call them again. You don't want to text them again. It's not because you don't love them. It's because, you know, if you call them or text them, they're going to start telling you because you know them. You know they miss you. You know for a fact they miss you, but you know for a fact if you go back, it, it's going to be the same cycle. Man, my eyes are no, no, my contacts are messed up because I got water behind my contacts. See, the process started, but you all didn't see it. So I'm saying, you, 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 you got to be careful. Number four, when you break up with somebody, chill out with the love songs. Listen, I'm going to tell you all a secret. If you want somebody to think about you, if you want somebody to, to think about you every time they hear something, send them a song. Send them a popular, not a song that you, they will never hear again. I ain't talking about a song that plays on the underground that don't play. Send them a song that plays on the radio. Send them a song and say, I was thinking about you when this song came on. Send them a song and say, hey, this is our song. I promise you. Every time the song plays, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. That was, she sent me this song. Oh my God, I miss her so much. Listen, the song begin to speak. The song begin to speak to you because song has this thing of a song. Music has this thing of playing this game with you that makes that messes you up. That frequency is powerful. That song begins to touch you in places that you remember what he or she did to you. You remember the day when they sent you the song, what you always experiencing. The conversation was so sweet. And one thing about the ego, one thing about the ego. Is the ego is trying so hard to hold on to the regular do what it knows. So now it's going to fight to keep that person because that becomes his identity. Remember, the ego's job is to protect the identity. That's the ego's job. It's not for you to change. It's not for you to feel good or feel bad. It's not for guilt. It's to protect that identity. So the identity that you have with this person, that's your husband, that's your wife, boyfriend or girlfriend for five years. Now, when you hear the song, the ego is like, hey. I'm going to tell you all the good things. Remember when he kissed you like this? Remember when you all went on a, this trip? Remember when he took you here? Or when she did this to you? Or when she was shaking her thing on you? Remember when she did this to you? How you felt? The ego trying to protect the union because that's the union is the identity. Do we understand the part? Because that's a very important part to understand. The ego tries to protect it. Hey, Kig. The ego tried to protect your identity. You are, you are getting it, right? That's why it's so hard to change. The reason why it's so hard to change is because you already said in your mind, I'm going to change tomorrow. By, tomorrow. by the time tomorrow comes, the ego has already built up so much resistance to that change because now you're talking about changing something that affects me. Now, I don't know who I am. If I change, then who, am I, who, would, who do I become? So the ego is like, how, who do I protect? 
who am I now? Who do I, who, who am I? What am I protecting? What identity? So that's why change is so bad. I think I'm all cried out. I don't have the time to be hurt by a man anymore. You, you, you sure sound like you are hurt for real. You sure, thank you for the gifts, Tony. Thank you so much for the gifts. Hey, again, all these gifts are going to helping children go back to school, buying them um, every little bit of these, these gifts are going to parents to buy um, school supplies for their children. None is coming to me or my children. All right, so just please thank you all for the, um, the, the gifts. I'm going to make a post on TikTok maybe in a couple of days to ask families who need help. Only the ones who need help. So, so thank you all for the gifts. We appreciate it. The families will appreciate it too. I just did a giveaway last week and people appreciate it big time. You, uh, if you all know what people are going through, they're going through so much. Um, and even a little bit of money, they are so thankful. I'm like, wow, you know, that, that amount of money won't do much for me. But I'm very happy that it's doing it for you. But I guess when you do, when you really need it, it's very helpful. So even the little bit counts. So I thank you all. Um, thank you. So, so number four, you have to get rid of these music. Stop listening to these sad loves, especially those 90s R&B. Those 90s R&B will put you back in those feelings. So hit, go to hip hop, the angry music. You know what I mean? Number five, when you break up with somebody, man, listen. Scent is very strong. Sometimes you have their clothes. Sometimes you have their shirts that, that you don't want to wash. Sometimes you have, you have the underwear that you wear and you, and you don't want to wash it. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have their things that has a smell of them. Sometimes even the sheets have a smell. The blanket have the smell of their cologne and their whatever, their scent. Burn them. Because I'm telling you, the senses is a very strong ego builder. When you smell, touch, feel, and taste, the memory becomes awakened. The memory is so strong and your body now is awakened by just the scent of a man or a woman. The scent of your ex will awaken so much things in you. It would awaken everything. Burn those things. If you want to move on and you can't, burn those shirts. Burn that underwear. Burn that pants. Whatever scent that they, have, they brought, burn it. Colognes in the house that they wore, throw it away. Burn those things. I'm telling you, burning is very important. The next thing that you do, especially if they live with you, take some sage and walk your whole house with that sage. Just light that sage, kill the energy. Because what does sage do? Sage, let those energy go. Not just the bad one, all the energy, good and bad. That's what the, 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 the thing about sage is it takes away all the energy. Your house becomes neutral again. Take the sage and walk through your entire house. <laughs> just, just walk with it all over. Your room, the living room, the kitchen, the garbage, the trash can. Put in the trash can, in the bathtub. Kill all that energy. Clear the entire energy. So I'm telling you, take that sage. If you really want to move on, take that sage. Light it up and burn it. The next thing. <coughs> Stop speaking about them. Stop speaking about them. Hey, listen, whatever you call witchcraft or all them, listen, that's witchcraft, right? Listen, listen, listen. Whatever limited knowledge that you have, understanding about witchcraft, you keep it, all right? But on my life, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak it. So you, you think it's witchcraft, then don't do it. If you think it's witchcraft, don't do it. Just don't do it. Do whatever you do, cry for them. Matter of fact, go to their house and sleep with them. That might be better. So. Number um number seven, stop speaking about them. Stop speaking their name. Stop speaking of them. Leave things alone. Because you know, like after we break up, sometimes we want to talk about them all the time. Every time you, you make videos, you want to talk about them, but you're not saying their names, but you're talking about them. Every time you're talking to your friends, they brought him, his name up, her name up. You want to do it, and then you want to tell everybody what he did or what she did. You want to tell all your friends, you, you, you're going to tell the church. You're going to tell everybody who wants to listen. You're going to, like, listen, you want to tell every single person who's willing to listen about what happened, what he did, what she did. Stop that stuff. Because now you are prolonging the energy in you. Because every time you speak of them, remember, every time you speak of these things, every time you speak of that man or that woman, the energy still lives in you. The spirit, the soul is still tied together. 
That's what soul ties is, right? Soul ties. Your souls are still tied with them. So every time you call their name, their soul awakens up in you. Now the emotion comes stronger. The emotions are stronger. You're like, oh, shoot. And, and that's why you, it, it becomes addictive. No, you're going to tell everybody about them. Because you can't let them go. The, the soul tie won't let you. Stop speaking their name. If you want to move on, accept the reality. Stop speaking their names. Their name represents who they really are to you. A person's name, the only reason why they have name is for an identity. But the identity is a soul talk. When you say, when you call your child's name, if I call my daughter's name and I say Leah, I'm saying Leah, but I'm connecting to her soul because I identify her soul as Leah so that she can hear me when I call her so she could identify I'm talking to you. Because when you look at your daughter or your child, you don't see a real face. You see a soul. You connect to that soul. So it's like, Leah, I'm seeing the soul. I'm connecting to the soul. So she knows as soon as I see her, I could hear her cry and know it's her. I could hear her cry in the middle of nowhere. Of all these kids and know it's her. That's her. Understand this right here. When you have somebody in your life that you was tied to for so long, their name represents a deeper level of understanding. It represents a connection. Stop speaking their names. Leave it alone. Understand that it's finished. <clears throat> number, number eight or seven. I don't know what number I'm on. The next one. When you finish with somebody, stop posting subliminal messages. It's embarrassing. Like seriously, it's embarrassing. And nobody really cares. <clears throat> and those emotions surface when you call in. Facts! Stop posting subliminal messages on freaking... Uh, thank you, Tony. I don't even know what number I'm on. On Facebook, you're making all these messages. TikTok, you come... Uh, so I'm telling you right now, this per... You know, don't trust nobody like this because they're going to do this. They're going to do this. Stop! Just cut it out. It's embarrassing. Everybody know that you're just being burned. And you're going to just continue to burn. Because the longer you talk about it, we, like people know. You see, like, for, like a, a man like me, I post random things. So you never know which one is going on in my life. Actually, I don't talk about my life on social media. Because my life is private. I have a very private life. Nobody know nothing about me. All you know is that I live in Estonia. You see my daughter sometimes or my son. But you don't, nobody knows anything about me. One thing about a life that you got, you, got, you got to keep your things private, especially your love life. Your love life, your money, and your next move, you keep private. Your love life, your money, and your next move, be quiet about it. It's nobody's business. What's up, DD Queen? So we got to keep quiet. But you posting all these subliminal messages, I'm telling you right now, men, men is going to say things. Man is, and everybody's like, oh shoot, you just posted that man on your Facebook for the past week. And now you start talking about men. So we all know, oh, you ain't posted him in two days. Whew, what happened now? What happened now? Oh shoot, you must woke up. Oh. Kaiser, what's good with you, man? How we doing? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, cut that. Stop posting stuff, man. Crap. It's annoying. It's, a, it's embarrassing. It's annoying too. Especially, I mean, sometimes we friend on social media. I'm your friend still. And I, I, I have to see all these stupid posts that you're talking about me. Or you or you talking about them. Or you, cut that out. It's not cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Block. I don't want to say that crap. Block. The stuff, is, the stuff is annoying. Stop posting subliminal messages. Let things die. Just let things die. The more... You let it die, the more it dies. The long, it's like it faster it dies. But the more you keep talking about it, the emotions, the feelings, all this stuff just stay in you. The energy stays in you. You just, oh my God. And every time you talk about it, here you go again, emotional. Oh my God. I can't believe. And here comes everybody with their two cents. You right, friend. Friend, you right. Friend. <laughs> friend, you right. right. You know what I mean? Try, trying to think that you're supporting the, Friend, you right. You're right. <clears throat> Many, and then you, find, you start to find people with the same experience, the same angry people come together, you know, trying to reconfirm or reaffirm what you are saying. Friend, for real. He, he, he friend, you're going to be okay, friend. You're going to be okay. And here you go. For real, I'm going to be okay. It's all right. The hell? 
The more you talk, thank you for the gift so much, High Priestess. Thank you so much. Thank you all for the gift so much. The more you talk about this stuff, is the more you're going to suffer. You're suffering. Every, you want somebody to cater to your suffering? This stuff is done. It ain't like there was good to you anyways. It ain't like there was a model man or woman. It ain't like there was so powerful. It ain't like there was so amazing to you. So what? You're really gaining peace. The longer you let it live. I'm, I'm telling you. You're gaining peace. You're gaining back your self-respect. And you're gaining back your insight. Are you mad still? What, what, what are you mad of? You just lost 190 pounds of weight. Because you let that dead weight go. And here you go mad still. Still, some, some of us are so addicted to pain. Addicted to suffering. That we don't even know when something is happening for our own good. Hey Daphne. We don't even recognize when something is happening for our own good. Sometimes when these people go. When these folks go that your life is for your own good. It's for your own happiness. Hey Tony. It's for your own freedom. It's for your own awakening. It's for your own progress. Unhealed trauma. That's fact. We have to understand sometimes. Be okay when people leave your life. They're supposed to leave. Let them jokers leave in peace. The next thing. Quit being angry. Quit being miserable. No, I'm reading my notes. Quit being miserable. And realize that when something is not supposed to be. No force in the world can put it back together. When something is not meant to be. No force in this entire universe could put it together. When something is not meant to be, nothing in this world, and no force in this world can make it stay together. Nothing. So what are you really mad at? The force or the situation? Are you mad at the force or the situation? Because the force is protecting you. The situation is decreasing you. So therefore, be happy, be free. You are completely free. When something is not supposed to be, nothing in this world can mend it. Seriously. And when something ain't suppo when something is supposed to be, nothing can break it. Nothing can break it. When it's meant to be, nothing can leave it. Nothing can make that change. I'm telling you, no matter how stubborn you are, things are gonna happen. It, it is gonna it is gonna listen. You can't stop what's supposed to be. So we have to get that in our minds and realize, what are you angry for? Stop posting this up. Just move on. Just understand that it's done. Everything is not, you know, every relationship is not meant forever. Some things are here to, to await. You know, many of us, have we, raise your hand, right? <clears throat> Thank you so much, Miss Ma, Miss Mary. <clears throat> you have a good day too. How many of us, raise your hand, who have experienced a strong love for somebody. Love was so strong, it made you free. It made you happy. You felt amazing. It made you glow. It made you live. It made you bless. It was such a high frequency to be in. You was at the best in your life. The strongest in your life, the most beautiful in your life, the most powerful in your life, and then that love stopped. That person left you or they died. That person left you or they died. That type of love sometimes distracts you. Seriously. That type of love don't last forever. It really don't. How many of us still have the love? How many of us still experience the love in the same person? How many of us still have that same love? A lot of us don't. That one time when you was able to love that much, the reason is gone. After seven and a half, that person usually die or the person leave. If for some reason, that, that, that love, that, and you know what though? You go your entire life looking for the same love again. And then you're going to say stuff like, I will never love somebody again like I loved you. You know, that, and that's you stopping yourself because you can. Because you can. But now, sometimes life brings to you somebody to remind you that you are able to love the same way. This time, do it on your own ground. On your own time. Listen, I'm telling you, sometimes the universe brings you people just to wake your ass up. Wake up. Experience this love. Experience this glow. Glow up. Smile. Smile. Feel good, feel amazing, be, feel, feel beautiful, feel strong, 
Feel untouchable. Feel invincible. Be great. Feel inspired. Feel motivated. The universe brings you somebody. And then it gets you to that place. It's your job to maintain that frequency. Because that person usually go. They can't stay for long. A lot of times they cannot stay for long. Because it is your obligation and it's your duty to maintain that frequency. It's not theirs. So the universe shows you a sign to say, listen, hey, you are able and capable to love again. This is how you love. This is your choice. Thank you all for the gift so much. This should be your choice. This right here, this should be where you stay. But many of us can't keep on to the same frequency because when the person go, we suffer. Our world tumbles. I can't love again. It's your love. Of course you can love again. It's, it was your love that you experienced. You experienced your own love and now you think that you can't experience your own love again. Let me tell you, your love don't need a reason. Your love don't need another person. Your love needs nobody to make it feel. Your love is a choice that you got to do. Your love now is under your control. That's the beautiful part about love. See, the universe sends us somebody to love that much. But I'm telling you, when the love is gone, oh Lord. When the, not the love. When the person is gone, we send the love with them. Don't send the love with them. Don't send the love. Keep the love. Because with the love, you don't need healing. See, when you let, when you let the love go, now you need it. I need healing. Of course you need healing because you have no love. Love is healing. Some of you all let people go with their love, with your love. I'm going to send you, but I'm going to send my love with you. I, I, I can never love somebody again. You can. It's your choice. You just want somebody who fits your perfect definition of what you think that you want before you love. You want somebody to come a specific way so that you can love them. No. You want to be, you want, you want somebody to come with the perfect conditions for you to be able to love unconditionally. You cannot <laughs> have somebody come with the perfect conditions so that you can love them unconditionally. Loving unconditionally is your choice. It's your choice. Yes, think for it. It's, it's your choice. You have to be able to accept people in all their nonsense and all this, all their clothes and the rags. But you cannot create conditions to love unconditionally. That's what we do. So when I meet the right person, I'm going to love them so much. Listen, people are going to come in your life and there's the ones that you least. Is the ones that you least expected. They're going to wake up some parts of you that you have never been awoken. You have, they're going to wake up um, parts of you that you have never been touched. They're going to wake up parts of you that you never knew existed. They're going to wake up parts of you that you, that, that's been dead for years. And guess what? When they wake it up, they leave. Their job is done. Their journey with you is done. And sometimes when they wake you up, it is your job to keep yourself awakened. That is your thing, to keep yourself awakened. Because let me tell you, now somebody said can't wait. No, 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 let me, let me say that right here. I know you said that you can't wait, and I, this is not a bad thing. But you don't have to wait for it. You can, you, can, <laughs> you can fire up that love right now inside of you, but you just don't know how. You can fire it up right now. You can ignite your... See, we use people to ignite our own love inside of us. You know how selfish that is? But we do it, un we do it unintentionally. We use people to spark up our own love. Listen to that again. We say we don't use people, but we are using people to spark up. <laughs> see, we don't get that part. We don't see it that way, right? You want a um, marshmallow? Go ahead and get one. We are using people every day Looking for somebody to spark up what we lack. What we don't know how to ignite. It's your love and you don't even know how to turn it on. Ain't, ain't that sad? You, that ain't the saddest thing. We have the power. We have the, 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 the source inside of us. We have the source. We have the juice inside of us. We have the fire. We have the answer to the test within us. But I need somebody to come and spark it up. And when they leave, we blame them. Next time, I want you to say thank you for the experience. Try it and see, and see what happens. 
Thank you for the experience to make me see myself. Because it's only when you love, you can see yourself clearly. <laughs> Some of you are walking around, I don't love, I don't trust, I don't love, I can't love. Then you can't see yourself clearly. Thank you, Tony. But thank God that God create people, or the universe bring people in your life, so that they can make you see yourself clearly. Through love. Thank you, um, Tink. Can I get an amen? Seriously, you got to tell people thank you for the experience because I was able to see myself. I was able to see and experience love. Now it's my duty to keep the fire burning within my own self. Because if I let love go, then I need healing. But do I really need healing? Not really. I don't need healing. I need love. That's what I need. Love. Because if I have love, healing is secondarily. Healing comes naturally. If I give away love and I switch love for anger and resentment and hate, now I need healing. Because you know what you do when you, when somebody leaves you on anger, resentment, hate, jealousy, and all them emotion takes over? Guess what? You prolong your healing because it's very hard to find healing under all those negative emotions. Those negative emotions, now you have to remove those emotions and it takes time. Now you got it because you've been carrying them for years. Some of you have been carrying anger and guilt and shame for so many years that you cannot remove them easily. So you think that you haven't even worked on the healing part yet. Now you got to dig up under the anger, the resentment, the bitterness. You got to do, you got to move all them things away and it takes forever. The reason why you need healing is because you let go of your love thinking that love was what they brought. They didn't bring love. You have love. All they did was say, hey. And your love connected to theirs and sparked something up. You ignited your own love. Listen, learn to ignite your own love. Don't expect anybody to make you love anyway. You can experience this same love every day of your life. You know how beautiful it is? To sit still. Maybe do some type of meditation. Excuse me. Some type of meditation. And just spark up this strong, amazing connection to the creator. That's what love really is. Love is only to with the creator. The more stronger your connection is to your creator, the more love that you have. But many of us are so connected to the mindset of the world. We are connected to our bodies, the way our body looks. We are distracted by what people think about us, people's opinion. We compare ourselves with people. That can't bring love. Because remember when you love this, do you remember your children when, when they were born? Why does a pregnant woman glow? Why does a pregnant woman glow? Because love, it's not because of her husband or her boyfriend or the man who impregnates her. It's because the child is within her. Now she is carrying love. That's what she's carrying. And as she carries love, the love shines from within out. So now her skin is glowing. Have you ever seen a pregnant person glow? Anybody ever, nobody know, know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever seen a pregnant? Because you've been married or you've been with a boyfriend for all these years. You wasn't glowing. But when you got pregnant, hey, you glowing. Why is it? It's not the boyfriend or the husband. Oh, it's the love. It's the love. It's the love that made you glow. So now you begin to love within you. You begin to love this being within you. You have this love for this thing that you have never seen, experienced, never touched. And this love is within you so much and it's so strong. You begin to just touch it. You can't wait to meet it. Meet him, meet her. You can't wait to connect to it and see it. You're going to connect to it. And now you're just having this beautiful feeling. I don't care if you're vomiting. Listen, you could throw up. You could have back pains, your ankles swollen, your nose look bad, your hair looking terrible, your head, your face, and you still have love. Listen, li listen, you're still glowing. I'm talking about your ankles this big. Your nose is this big on your face. Your hair is just got hard and nappy. Right? It's just hard and it's just naps now. Right? You're wearing this clothes that you can't stand, stand. Your back hurts. You're uncomfortable when you sleep, when you lay down. But yet, I will not change this for the world. Because what you are carrying within, it is so much greater than whatever is outside. That's what love does. That's what love is. Whatever is carrying it on the within, it is more powerful than what's outside. When we learn how to connect to that on the inside of us, 
that's when you find love. That's where love is, on the inside. And when we learn the inside of us, when we learn how beautiful we are, how precious we are, how connected we are, who we are, what we are, and what we really are, love begins to shine. And now you don't have to depend on somebody else to, to show you love or to make you feel love. Now love becomes your first language. It becomes what you are. So when people leave you, bye, because the love's still here. See, but when you don't experience love first, when people come and it sparks up your love, now you become attached to them. If they go, your love begins to become threatened. Come on now, somebody say amen. I'm preaching today. Lord, I'm preaching. <laughs> I'm preaching today, ain't I? I'm done preaching now. <laughs> Listen. I don't know what number I'm on. I, I think I forgot what number I'm on. <laughs> I think I forgot what number I was on. But I said, quit being miserable and angry. Realize that when something is not supposed to be, that no force can make it happen. Exactly, it's codependency. You got to spark up your own love. But to spark up your own love, you have to have knowledge of who you are. See, to love yourself is to know thyself. To know thyself is to love thyself. See, if you don't know yourself, you can't love it. Because all you're going to see is the harsh things. You're going to see the physical body. You're going to see the stretch mark. You're, you're going to see the right boob is not the same as the left boob. Or your butt cheeks is not the same as her butt cheeks. You know what I mean? You're going to see he looks better than you. And you're going to see his pee, pee bigger than your pee, pee And you're going to compare yourself with him and her. And you're going to find that. You're going to always find resistance with yourself. You should not find love when there's resistance. You find love when there's acceptance. Complete acceptance. Then, and only then, then, and only then, you are not afraid to be with someone else. Because when they leave, when they're there, you are loving the same. And when they leave, you love the same. Because if they didn't bring you love, they can't take it. See, nobody could make you stop loving if love was there before. See, nobody could take your love because it's yours. They have their own. <laughs> I'm serious. They have their own. They can't take your love. They can never. See, that's the secret. They could never take your love. You just let your love go because you think that there's no reason to love. But because you forget yourself. See, many times we forget ourselves in the, in the damn um, formula. We forget ourselves because we focus on them. Always focus on ourselves. If I bring my best self and she brings her best self, there's not that much work need to be done. See, we say relationships are so hard. No. If I bring my best self and you bring your best self, what's the work? We're going to compliment each other. There's no competition. There's no fight. There's no ego battles. There's no control fights. Because I'm my best self. You are your greatest self. We come together. What, what work? Remember, there's a law of least resistance. That's what nature uses. That's why the weed grows between the concrete. That's why the weeds grow. That's why the forest grows so high. Because they grow with the least resistance. That means that people is not bothering them. Things ain't bothering them. They go to a place where there's least resistance. We want to be challenged. We want somebody to challenge us. I want my man to challenge me. To, 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 what do you all call it? Like, what do you all call it? To something my mind. To, what, what, what's the word? To, ch not, not challenge, to stimulate my mind. You can't stimulate your own mind. That's the problem. A woman told me one time, Kirk, I need you to stimulate me. Listen, if you can't stimulate yourself, I don't need you. If you can't stimulate yourself, you are a child. You shouldn't depend on somebody else to stimulate. There's books. You know how much books are out there? Do you know how many books, do you know how many unlearned things is out there? Do you know how many things that you don't know? If you can't stimulate your own mind from questions that you haven't answered yet, something is wrong with you. You want me to stimulate your mind? Listen, I'm stimulating, my, I'm busy doing my own mind. You want me to challenge you? I don't want to challenge you. You are a grown woman. Challenge you how and why? It is your job to challenge yourself on a daily basis. So therefore, you don't depend on people that much. 
See, this the problem is when we're in relationship, we put all these things on the other person. We're not doing that. No man. No man. I ain't want that. Don't give me that much stuff. I want to stay a man. I want to challenge myself. I'm going to read my books that I'm going to read. I'm going to do my spirituality practices. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to challenge my mind by asking questions. When I see the ant walking on the ground, when I see an ant walking, I'm going to be like, damn, where is he going? Where is the ant going? How is he building that? How did it work together? How are they coming together as little? How are they communicating? See, that's what challenges you. But we want, we depend on the other person, another man or another woman to challenge us, to make us think. It is not nobody's job to make you think. It is your job to use your mind that you have, that you have accumulated to make you work for you. The problem is we can't do that. If he's boring, she's boring. Why is he or he boring? And if they're boring, why is it a big deal? You know why? Because you expect them to fix in you what you lack. You're boring. See, if you don't like yourself, it's because it's the company that you are with. See, when you buy yourself and you don't like it, it's because of the company that you are with. Yourself. You're boring. When you invest in always occupying yourself. What's up, Clyde? How are you doing? When you can sit still and do nothing. When you can challenge yourself, work on yourself, do for yourself, think on your own stuff. Listen, you know, you know how much things... Sometimes I stay up at night, not, not much. I'm like, how do I astral project tonight? And I'm like, okay, let me work on this. I don't need you to challenge me when I'm doing that. Sometimes I'm like, okay, how do... If you're bored and you're sick, how are you going to be bored? How are you, you going to be bored and sick? Why, why, aren't you try, why, why aren't you working on healing yourself? How are you going to be bored and broke? 